can I talk with? Yeah, yeah, sure, you can, you can. Because I have a question about assignment. Okay, okay. So, uh, do you want to ask now? No, after the class. Okay, that's all right. Yeah, sure, you can do that. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Okay, let's uh, continue where we stopped. So yeah, we said that uh, to transform um, the, the city, live the gospel, share the gospel, demonstrate the gospel. And uh, another way of taking authority is to pray. Pray, intercede, exercise authority. So it's got to be a combination of you know both of these things. It's not one or the other. Sometimes what happens, you know, believers go only into prayer and you know prayer meeting, prayer meeting, prayer meeting, prayer meeting. But then, uh, who is going to? Jesus said, "Go into all the world, make disciples." So there's a balance. We have to pray, and we have to go. So that's when we will begin to see, you know, uh, what uh, God's Spirit is doing in our midst. Uh, and so really be led by the Spirit of God. So engaging in prayer, we have learned so much about it. You know, we've seen how God's Word says that He's looking for one man to stand in the gap and intercede uh, for His people in uh, Isaiah 59. We've also seen how Second Chronicles 7.14, the scripture says, if my people who are called by my name, they will humble themselves and pray. They would, um, you know, turn from their wicked ways. Uh, I, I will he uh, hear and I will heal their land. So there is prayer which is very very important and i i know that there are a lot of prayer movements around the world where people gather together to pray like even in in the uh, us i know that uh, you know there is something called as the call okay and just one that is notable but i'm sure there are so many more where people gather together to pray for their nation people call you know, days of uh, fasting um, and and this is not restricted to a single church but many churches in the city come together they gather together they they repent on behalf of the the um, sins of the city and you know, they cry out to god uh, and, and this is all so important you know, as we do these things we can see god's hand moving in powerful ways so we must ask god god give us these opportunities lord to come together and really cry out in prayer for our nation for you know the the region that you have given us so prayer is so important establishing the presence of god through praise and worship so just one example i'll give you okay this is a uh, over a, uh, a region mm. now you know that there is a particular church i try not to take the names of churches okay so don't mind that's why i'm not you know giving you names of people or, or names of specific names of churches uh, because you know god does these things in in many different places so one particular church uh, it's planted in a place where there was a revival in in uh, 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 you know some years ago there are so many notable revivals in history so one revival actually took place in this particular place and uh, apparently that revival was grounded and rooted in prayer to a large extent you know people had prayed for many years for that revival to take place and this church is um, planted today in that particular region so somebody who had visited that church you know they shared their testimony and talked about how even though the revival took place so many years ago that culture of prayer okay, that culture of prayer sort of um, you know, uh, has impacted that region that when these people went to visit and, you know, they were resting through the night, the atmosphere, you know, is already uh, so, um, I mean, they, they talked about uh, dreams and visions and, you know, uh, angelic activity and all that in that particular place. And they felt that freedom in in that city and they were like wow i cannot imagine that what 
people have sowed in prayer so many years ago there's something about that place that it continues to have uh, you know the, that open atmosphere um and so what i'm saying is you know I, uh, basically we're talking about spiritual warfare isn't it so when we engage in prayer when we engage in uh, praise worship you know the paths of darkness over a region you know, we've learned about all this in prayer and intercession territorial spirits you know, what happens they are broken their power is broken so then we have what we are talking about now you know, more of an open atmosphere or more of a, a place where god can freely release his power without any hindrance you know it's as simple as that though we are using terms like atmosphere and all you know don't get uh, you know too caught up by that so prayer praise and worship i was amazed to hear that testimony and i thought wow you know people have prayed in the past and that continues to impact the region you imagine if all of us engage in prayer uh, what value that brings to the place where we are positioned uh, definitely you know there is so much power in in prayer in praise and worship that you can almost sense it in the spiritual realm you know, uh, sense it in the i'm again using the word atmosphere over that region and as believers we can um, you know cause this to happen over our particular regions so engage in prayer engage in worship i heard another testimony of a particular church where uh, they talk about uh, you know the environment apparently um, uh, this is in in the us again uh, apparently the place where this church is planted you know they have people practicing witchcraft all around okay and it's known for it's very famous for uh, some carnivals and and uh, you know uh, new age sort of uh, festivals and things like that so even though all these dark things are taking place around uh, the church is doing very well and the church is th really thriving and it seems you know people had come into the church even to cast spells on uh, you know the service and what was going on but they left because you know, when they went into an atmosphere where prayer was going on where praise and worship was going on uh, you know the demon spirits were tormented in the presence of god and they couldn't handle it and they just left you know they just ran away from there so you know, these are all just some practical uh, examples that i'm sharing with us you see really what god god's presence can do uh, what us engaging in prayer can do against the enemy so uh, as individuals as churches you know, as fellowship city wide church more and more you know let's let's raise up let's uh, uh, raise up this the standard of prayer praise worship and uh, many things will be accomplished over regions over cities over nations uh, okay uh, and not just okay i prayed god answered my prayer i'm walking in you know individual spirit believers authority the finished no when we all join our hearts together the the prayers that we pray can really touch the city the nation and even regions so there is that kind of uh, power you know which god has given and we must ensure that we walk in it now we can how do we exercise our spiritual authority prayer uh, binding losing you know we've discussed about all these things and also walk in righteousness remember we said uh, that is the breastplate of righteousness we are putting on uh, we are demonstrating that we are the righteousness of god in christ jesus by walking in righteousness uh, so maybe there is injustice corruption but we walk with um, righteousness towards finances and that way you know the power of the enemy will be broken maybe there is idolatry okay but we walk in worshiping uh, the word of god says that god is spirit and those who worship him will spirit worship him in spirit and in truth so i can walk that way worshiping god as uh you know him in spirit and in truth and i don't carry any uh, idols in my heart the bible talks about spiritual idols not just physical idols so 
when i am walking righteous before god i don't have any spiritual idols then i'm walking powerful and you know my spiritual warfare will be uh, powerful so in this manner we begin to engage in spiritual warfare and we will see you know regions uh, and and nations touched for the gospel so talking about spiritual warfare again coming back to a couple of things that we must be careful about you know don't get too concerned excuse me about what the devil is doing and we've said this earlier don't be devil focused be god focused because we are the ones who already have the victory then the next thing about spiritual warfare is don't get too overly concerned about spiritual mapping remember i shared with us that um, there is a, a practice known as spiritual mapping before people pray for a city okay or a region what they do is they will chalk out and say oh okay what are the strongholds in the city okay north of the city there is the stronghold of uh, you know whatever the spirit of lust the uh, east of the city there is a stronghold of um, you know injustice uh, west of the city there is a stronghold of alcoholism so th this is known as spiritual mapping they basically identify what kind of demon spirits are active in that region and then they pray specifically against those spirits nothing wrong with it but getting too engulfed uh, into that may not be uh, so appropriate so let's say uh, you're praying and you suddenly realize oh i don't know which spirit is affecting you know this region uh, okay let's do the spiritual mapping and come back may not be required you know just pray god's power is sufficient even if you didn't identify you know a certain stronghold god's victory can still be released so yeah don't get too caught up uh, into spiritual mapping if it helps you a little bit to pray properly that should be good yeah and of course uh, we've addressed this issue as well the fear of backlash where whenever we take uh, um spiritual warfare okay as a subject people worry oh if i go against the devil the devil will come against me we've addressed this matter and we've already said that we have been given authority to trample over serpent serpents and scorpions luke 10 19 and nothing by any means shall harm us so we should not have the fear but if i start carrying fear let's say you know i think i started spiritual warfare i started praying for the city something is going to happen to me then what is happening is it's like the job concept you know, job 325 where he says uh, whatever i feared it came upon me so when i fear something it's like an open door which the enemy can use to make exactly that happen in my life so don't fear uh, and just trust that you know god has you covered uh, you are functioning from the victory of god and so you, know, you don't really have to worry and moreover you know we have been given the weapons of warfare we have been given the armor which we can put on to protect ourselves in 1 john 5:18 the bible also says that as long as we are walking in righteousness um, we deal with all the sin in our lives the enemy cannot touch us Okay, so this kind of protection we have, why should we we worry about backlash? And there are some believers; they say that you know, okay, let the pastors pray or let the leaders pray. We will just be in the background because if the enemy attacks, they can handle. We can't handle. But you see, where is the biblical basis for all this? It's the same Jesus, the same cross, the same believers' authority, isn't it? That has been given to all believers. So. all believers can walk in victory just sitting uh, and and uh, you know waiting for a better time or waiting when i feel stronger uh, we don't have to do that we already have dominion and authority which we can use through prayer so uh, believers should be bold you know in uh, going against the enemy so continue to go after the regions 
now when i say regions it may be physical now god has put on some of our hearts you might have africa is on my heart india is on my heart or you might say uh, you know just any one nation simply i'm saying okay uh, um, mongolia is on my heart so god might call us to that region and you go there and you start serving god in that place like hudson taylor he went to china okay william carey he came to india so maybe god puts a local or a uh, or a geographical place on our hearts however god can also put you know other uh, um non geographical things on our hearts for example you know music is on my heart media is on my heart you know, family is on my heart you know, seven mountains we talk about you know, the the uh, spheres of influence maybe god put something like that on your heart and says literature so wouldn't it be wonderful if if uh, somebody writes uh, with godly principles and uh, somebody even comes up with poetry that is so you know undergirded by the righteous principles of god's word so many things social justice what if social justice is on your heart so there are all these territories for us to take over but what is required to take on a territory you see all of us get very excited you know if there is a a prophetic word or somebody says brother i see that you know god is going to give you the nation we'll just jump in with joy we say oh wow god thank you you know you have uh, asked me to take over this nation or something like that but that is only one part god revealing it is one part now the part that is left to do is the harder part which is i have to step into it you know i have to have the courage every day to do what it takes so what is it going to take to impact the nation god might say okay you preach the gospel okay god i'll preach the gospel you plant churches okay god i will plant churches you govern the churches so there's a lot of hard work isn't it so all this okay i am involved in teaching i am involved in this i am involved so many things that i have to do in order for that word from god to be fulfilled in my life so you know uh what i'm saying is every day we got to stand up in believers authority and say yes god you know um i have to conquer battles after battles after battles after battles to get that land or get that territory it could be a geographical territory or it could be as i said india yeah, you know journalism uh, something social work that is what god has put on my heart i have to get that territory so uh, here in our notes you know there is the example of caleb from joshua the book of joshua chapter 14 uh, verses 6 through 15 it's really interesting you know what uh, happened is when uh, Moses had sent out spies uh, to spy out you know Canaan the promised land 12 of them went now among the 12 there were only two people who brought back a positive report okay 10 of them said oh it's a land with giants if we go there we'll get crushed by the giants but two of them Joshua and Caleb they say that, hey no problem it's a land flowing with milk and honey and we can triumph you know we can uh, overcome the enemy so there was an overcoming spirit and the bible says you know, caleb had a different spirit he had a different spirit an overcoming spirit so he looked at a territory he was happy about it and you know he was promised a piece of that territory now he was about you know 45 years when he actually goes to spy the land and this territory is promised to him now we see in joshua chapter 14 that he comes back to joshua finally you know moses is gone there's the joshua generation they have entered the promised land and it is joshua's task to um conquer the giants you know he's going region by region they're conquering places and they are occupying places so that is joshua's assignment and he is doing that and at that time you know caleb comes back with a reminder to joshua and says give me my mountain i was promised a territory i want it back and at that time uh caleb is 85 years old 
okay just imagine just imagine to have that kind of a passion we are we are all sitting in this class today and we might think yes i'm going to go i'm going to pray for the nation i'm going to pray for the regions all that it might you know just human passion will last a day maybe a week i don't know maybe even a month but the passion of the spirit right that is the thing that is going to keep burning that fire will keep burning and you know it never dies down so it seems like caleb had that you know, caleb after 40 years he's coming back to joshua and he says where is my mountain give me my mountain i'm still as strong as the time that i went out to spy the promised land so you see we need that kind of passion to take territory for the kingdom of god and uh, so caleb has a very very inspiring example for us he never stopped desiring so when it comes to impacting regions impacting cities you know we need that kind of a like i would say it is from the spirit you know if it is from the flesh what happens it will die down but if it is from the spirit that kind of a passion where we say god we want to see the nations touched transformed then like caleb 40 years later will still be saying where is my territory come on don't give up till i get my territory i'm not going to keep quiet i'm keep going to keep asking god so caleb asked joshua we are asking god and we are saying god give us our mountain we want to take our mountain so we read also in that passage that there is a place called kirjat arba which was known as the land of the giants okay so there were giants in that land and it was not a good place you know people would be exiled on that land but that is the place which was assigned to caleb and once assigned to caleb you know that land of the giants became hebron hebron is a place of friendship hebron is a place of relationship hebron is a place of restoration okay so you can imagine you can imagine a land of giants with destruction is now turned around to a place of friendship where people can go rest okay in that particular region so that is how god transforms mountains and you know places we have to take it by faith and do what god has called us to do by faith and we will see a transformation okay so that is a little bit about um uh, using our authority for transformation city transformation you know exercising our spiritual authority okay uh yeah so let me quickly just go over the last chapter here and then i will pause if at all there are any questions uh so the last chapter here basically it's a reminder about the boundaries of the exercise of our spiritual authority okay so just because we have spiritual authority we cannot defy the god given structures you know that uh, we have already discussed about so what are these boundaries so one is we cannot go oppose god's plan for the human race suppose we say okay god i am so angry with so and so um they should not be saved can that happen no it can't happen because the bible says that god so loved the world that he gave his only son that whosoever would believe what if that person that you don't like believes in jesus they will be saved we cannot change god's plan god has already put things in order his redemption his second coming you know all those things so that cannot be changed now if as a believer i say no i am going to change it the world is going to end today and i'm going to pray and ask god god you end the world today so these are all weird things because we are not understanding what god's word is saying as long as we go by the word and god's plan then we are fine okay so there is that boundary we can't just do our own thing because we have dominion and authority so we cannot oppose god's plan for the human race in line with that we cannot violate 
God's written word. That's quite clear. Then we must be aligned to the mind of God in a particular situation. So by that, what do we mean? You see, uh, there are uh, different ways okay, in, in which God ministers. So I'll just take, for example, healing. I'll take, for example, healing. Now, when I'm praying for somebody, how did Jesus minister healing? So many different ways. He said, be healed with a word. Sometimes he touched. Sometimes he um, cast out a demon spirit. Sometimes he, you know, uh, different things. He just gave an instruction. Okay, take up your bed, walk. So uh, once he mixed uh, some clay with mud. Now, let's take, for example, that pool of Siloam. Okay, you mix the mud with uh, saliva and put it on that blind man's eye. Can I keep doing that all the time? Every time I pray for people, shall I mix mud and put it on them? I'm not going by what the Holy Spirit is telling me in that moment. I'm just doing my own thing. I can't expect healing to manifest if I'm doing my own thing you know, all the time. So it's like that. So every time I'm praying for somebody, I have to be connected to the mind of God. And I say, okay, God, you show me. What? How can we minister to this brother? God might say, okay, you take them through healing scriptures for two weeks. You sit with them, do a Bible study for two weeks. Okay, God, that is how you want it. That's the mind of God for this person. I'll do it. You go pray for another brother and Holy Spirit says, okay, you take some oil, put it on their head and heal them. Right? So we follow the leading of the Spirit. Everything is not done in the same way. So I have to be aware. Now, one person comes to me and says, brother, I want to do ministry. I want to quit my job. Can I quit my job? And as we are praying, as we are talking for a few weeks, you know, that person also feels led that, yeah, they need to come into full-time ministry. Great. Wonderful. Now, maybe we are ministering to another brother. They say, brother, I want to quit my job. I want to do ministry. But as we are counseling them, praying for them, Holy Spirit might say, no. I have called this person in the marketplace. They need to be in business. So the same thing doesn't apply. The mind of God for this person is different. For another person, it's different. So uh, I have to be aligned to the mind of God. You know, I cannot keep commanding. I can't say, okay, you quit your job. I command you to be blessed. So you see, authority is there. Dominion is there. But I have to work with God, okay, which is what is most important. Then, very crucial things. We've already discussed this. We cannot manipulate a human being's will. So even for salvation, God says, okay, if you believe. So it is that person's choice. We can't override the will of a human being. So through dominion authority, we can't do that. Then we cannot force a gift or work of God into a heart of unbelief. You see, even unbelief is something that limited God. So, uh, we, we, we know that. If people are not choosing to believe, remember we said that while going through the deliverance model, if a person says, I don't want, you leave me, don't pray for me, I'm fine. We'll have to leave them because it is their will coming into action now. And they don't have faith. You can't do much. So we can't force the work of God. or Force them. You get saved. You have to get saved. We can't do such things. Because you see, uh, the gift of God is there. But there's also unbelief you know, on the other side. So we can't penetrate through that. So always remember, I can't use my dominion outside of God's word. I can't use my dominion, you know, outside of uh, God's mind. What is God thinking now? What does he want me to do now? Okay, so I can't use my authority as I like. And of course, to manipulate people, I should not do that. Okay, then just a reminder here, as we are using authority, sometimes we might uh, not have uh, a positive result. For example, uh, let's say we go and pray for 10 people to be delivered from demons. Five of them didn't get delivered from demons. You prayed, 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 did so many sessions, but not delivered. So don't uh, 
don't then say that hey, this doesn't work yeah pablo botari model doesn't work of course believers authority demonology deliverance i don't know why i did 3 months it doesn't work okay no because you see see god's word is true but in the practice of god's word sometimes we um you know we take a while to figure out exactly how to work with it um so as we are continuing in god's word you might see that you your if you want to call it like you know success rate in uh, deliverance might keep increasing because you know you're learning to work with the spirit and it's getting better and better and better so god's word is always true don't make a doctrine out of experience imagine you know in uh, matthew 17 the disciples uh, somebody brought a boy to them and said okay you are the disciples of jesus you cast out the spirit but they could not then what happens they come and tell jesus jesus rebukes them he says what is this you know you are with me i taught you everything you are not able to cast out one demon and then jesus actually casts out the demon so did it mean that you know you can't cast out a demon no there was something the disciples were missing and so you know thank god later on jesus told them you know why then he told them this kind will not come out except by fasting and prayer so he gave them the answer to why it could have gone wrong so even in our lives even in ministry we go by god's word but sometimes maybe somebody didn't get healed or you know somebody didn't do well even though you counsel them as per god's word somebody didn't get delivered don't worry you do your part to do what is right okay and keep holding on to god's word don't try to bring the word of god to match our experience then what are we doing we are bringing the we are lowering the standard of god's word to match our experience that should not be the case instead maybe my experience is here but god's word is here and i just keep trying to take my experience up to the level of god's word okay so what what could be the reasons that uh, somebody didn't get delivered possibly there is some unconfessed sin or some stronghold which was not dealt with some unbroken dedication pledge um you know um some curse something like we never dealt with it those were open doors and that's why the person didn't get delivered or um you know there could be a lack of faith on the part of that person or uh, i am not understanding the mind of god you know what should i do i am not yet well versed in letting the gifts of the spirit to operate through me so there are many reasons there are many reasons why something did not work out so we can think about it every time we don't have success we can think okay what could have gone wrong next time you know i'll try to improve i'll try to uh, pray up and go or read read up uh, scriptures on this particular thing and go something like that so you prepare yourself to overcome what went wrong okay now having said this see sometimes even though we sit and think what went wrong you know we prayed we fasted we commanded we did this we did we did everything so many people prophesied also what went wrong why that person didn't get delivered why didn't they get healed you know sometimes there may not be answers okay what do we do at that time when we don't have answers and we are wondering lord but i did everything whatever you told i did you see there's a scripture in uh, uh, deuteronomy 29 verse 29 it says the secret things belong to the lord god is god because he knows everything we are mortal we are human beings we don't know everything we don't even have the capacity to know everything so sometimes some answers might remain secret god might think okay you need not know why this didn't happen right so in those moments when it's so mysterious and we don't have an answer you know the real life of faith is when we say god i can't figure it out i don't understand but i know your word is true like really your faith has come to that level and uh, you continue to believe in the word even though 
you know it probably you didn't see uh, things work out in terms of healing or deliverance or something else earlier you say okay i don't understand but i will continue to trust in your words some things are mysterious to me i'm okay you know to not understand so as a believer we have to come to that place that sometimes there will be unanswered questions and uh, we should learn to live peacefully with unanswered questions we may never be able to answer are we going to find the answer in the life to come i don't know i mean if god chooses to tell us well and good but if he doesn't think it's important then yeah i don't i don't know uh, but it's okay to have some questions unanswered and yet you know maturity is in learning to live peacefully with those questions and don't point fingers you know sometimes we we've already said this we don't blame people you know, to say oh brother you didn't get healed because you don't have faith you see even jesus couldn't do miracles because people didn't have faith so what are we doing are you are we building their faith level no we are crushing their spirit so can we expect them to get healed with this kind of ministry no okay so don't point fingers and say oh their family didn't do you didn't do you didn't pray they didn't pray no 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 come out of all that and say lord you show and if let's say god does not reveal what exactly was the issue because there can be so many issues we say okay lord you know i just submit it at your feet and continue from there okay so there can be times when questions are unanswered okay yeah and always follow the model of jesus okay when it comes to uh, healing deliverance who is our standard you know today youtube is there google is there uh, live stream is there we see so many churches and we have some examples are very good examples we have you know people of god moving in the power of god not just that but they are also very humble they are also very well rooted in the word of god good examples are there you know we are not saying they're not there we can learn from all of them but our main example should always be jesus always how did jesus do it what did jesus do i will follow that okay so he remains our best example or our model to follow after and uh since we have learned about believers authority you know be strong in that take authority whether it is at the personal level or you know family level church or anything okay so with that i think we have uh, quite elaborately gone through your entire course material and uh, we have completed it Mm, and uh, yes i haven't yet released uh, your assignment they will be very simple assignments i will be releasing it today my apologies i really like you know with the e learn and uh, the google classroom i have found it very difficult to kind of um, uh, keep my schedule so my sin sincere apologies i'm struggling with that but uh, today i will uh, release your assignments you will have enough and more time to complete it and uh, if you uh, and my request is please submit it on the day uh, or before the deadline because then it becomes easy for us to correct you know if uh, you submit it one day later two days later and then you know a week later sometimes we can't even track the late assignments that are coming in and then you know we miss marking it it delays your certificate so many issues so keep uh, a tab on the last date the assignments will be simple you will be able to complete it easily and uh, hand it in uh, you know on the last day or before it okay so with that i'm going to stop and uh, any any uh, closing comments if you all have we can have that and then uh, yeah aradna you had some question for sitkeno Oh, <laughs> she's logged out of the call. Sitkinu, is there any other way to? Okay, maybe she can message you on the stream page, no? On on the classroom. Yeah, yeah ma'am, she can. But I don't know about like what she wanted to ask me. Okay, okay, okay. Let's just leave it. Uh, if she needs to. Oh, she's back. Aranda. Yes, ma'am. Uh. uh 
Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Uh, I I want to ask the WhatsApp group I want to join because I didn't understand about assignment. So I will ask him in WhatsApp group. So I don't have that link of WhatsApp group. Actually, Aradhna, like I have posted the link, WhatsApp group link in the section of the meeting also. You can just click on that and you can join. Where but I don't know. नहीं जहाँ पे कमेंट सेक्शन है मैंने वहाँ पे डाल दिया है आप क्लिक करके ज्वाइन कर सकते हैं ओके थैंक यू ओके थैंक यू ओके आई होप यू फाइंड इट आराधना ओके यू पोस्टेड हियर आल्सो ग्रेट ओके आई होप दैट हेल्प्स फॉर या शी लेफ्ट द क्लास सो आराधना द द whatsapp group link is on the chat section okay i am reposting it for you please make a quick note yeah okay all right uh, uh, that's that's fine anything else class you wanna ask about or say today is your last class by the way <laughs> we finished the portions so all right so then uh, i could only pray and trust that whatever we have learned um uh, you know it's it's a seed uh, you have the uh, foundation in believers authority but i'm sure you know god will teach you so much more as you go forward and also not just head knowledge remember i was saying believers authority is something that we have to apply so in our everyday lives and i can only pray that you know god would uh, uh, strengthen you and help you to use your authority uh, for the glory of his name and for his kingdom okay so let's just pray together class come let i am going to pray for all of you Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this day. Father, we thank you for your grace. We thank you, Lord, for your empowering and strength, Lord, for this entire semester that we were able to go through this class, Lord, Lord, for myself and all the students, Lord, who have journeyed along so faithfully. Father, I ask for your hand of blessing. upon each one of them lord i pray that what they have learned oh god will strengthen them it will position them lord in victory every time oh god against uh, lord the enemy and father god once again i i declare over them the victory of the cross father lord i pray that lord they will be rooted and grounded lord in the finished work of the cross lord knowing that the enemy has been destroyed expelled oh god lord that uh, Father God, you have, uh, Lord, uh, handed over that victory to your children, Father. And Lord, I pray that each one will rise up with great boldness, Father God, in uh, Lord everything that you have called them to do. And Father, I pray that not. just that they will be bold but lord through them lord let many others also come to know about uh, the authority that you have given us and i pray father that lord all of us together lord that as we were talking today about city transformation and about impacting lord the world around us with the gospel that each one of us lord will be salt and light making a difference for your kingdom father god lord thank you thank you that you have called us to be salt and light lord and father once again i i uh, bless uh, each student i bless their families as well i bless their ministries i pray that lord they will continue to grow in you uh, lord continue to learn many things oh god and continue to be established oh god in the in the call that you have for each one of them lord thank you once again father god and today lord i especially pray that lord you will meet them at their point of need if there be anything that uh, each one is going through lord financial difficulty or uh, lord sickness in their body father we we command your healing right now in jesus name lord father any oppression uh, that they are experiencing father we declare your freedom over that situation lord and father may your glory and your power be revealed in their lives lord we thank you once again we exalt you we honor you in jesus name we pray amen amen 
yeah so thank you everybody i really appreciate you i know it's not at all easy to join a course and complete the course okay uh, so it really takes a lot of commitment and you all have done it this is your last class so uh, yeah great job god bless uh, please make sure you complete your assignment also yeah tell uh, you want to say something is it kino ma'am i just wanted to say thank you and god bless you for each and everything the hard work you have done for us oh. ma'am okay my yeah my pleasure thank you so much yeah i am so glad i had the opportunity okay so yes class and the um, stream page is still there for you in case you want to communicate uh, with me just post your questions on the stream page the classes from next uh, friday you take that time for your assignments All right. So, bye, everyone. Take care. God bless you. Thank you. Bye. 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 God bless.